vector in physics is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. It is typically represented by an arrow whose direction is the same as the one of the quantity and whose length is proportional to the quantity's magnitude. Although a vector has magnitude and direction, it does not have well, position. I'm going to show you how to get the resultant vector from the video that you just watched. So I went 55 steps down and then 50 steps left. Um, to get the distance, um, I use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I have that on the calculator, and so it came out to 74. Now, since we have the distance, we need the direction. So I'm going to look for mu, right, the angle. So I'm going to use tan, inverse tan, uh, 50 over 55, which is inverse tan 50 divided by 55 which is uh, round out to 42. So that's 42 degrees. So we, I need to subtract that from 90 to get this degrees. So 90 minus 42, which is 48. So that's 48. And I'm going to add 180 to 48 to get this full um, degrees. So 180 plus 48, which gives us 228. So the resultant vector would be 74 steps at 228 degrees. An object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an un unbalanced force, in this case which is the wall, because it is an unbalanced force stopping the wall. Newton's second law states that the F net is equal to MA, or mass times acceleration. So we, we are going to find the F net for um, the clip we just watched of the car. So first of all, we have the mass, which is equal to 1,588 kilograms. So next, we're going to have to find the acceleration so that we can multiply that by the mass to get the F net. To find the acceleration, we need to start off by getting the velocity. So we know that we traveled 67 meters in seven seconds. So this will give us an, a velocity of 9.6 meters per second. So now that we have the velocity, now that we have the velocity, we can um, now find the acceleration. By dividing this by the time again, which is seven seconds, we will get 1.4 which will give us, which is the actual uh, acceleration. So 1.4 meters per second is the acceleration. Now to find the F net, we will take 1.4 and multiply that by 1588. And this will equal our F net. And F net is equal to 2,223. Yes. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Alright, so Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And the rocket's action is to push down on the ground with the force of its engines, while the reaction is that the ground pushes the rocket upwards with an equal force. This is an example of precision because even the, the balloons are not hitting the target, they're all close to each other. This is an example of accuracy because each balloon is hitting close to the target.
free fall because there is no initial velocity. Here we are trying to find y or the height which the ball was dropped using the mm -hmm. equation y equals 1 half gt squared. The time is 1.2 seconds. We will square that to get 1.44. Then multiply that by 4.9 which is half the gravity. The answer is 7.05 meters. This is an example of equilibrium because the boxes do not move, and this shows that each person exerting the same amount of force on the boxes. Hello class, I'm going to teach you about sig figs today. Okay, so first rule is all zeros, all non-zeros, non-zero numbers are sig figs. So for example, number one, uh, seven, that's one sig fig. Okay, now sig, sig fig number two, all zeros between non-zero numbers are sig fig. So example two is two o oh, two, so that'll be three sig figs. One two three. Okay, now number three. Number three states that all zeros which are to the left of the decimal point are one are uh, sig figs. So for example, um, twenty, twenty and point. So that's two sig figs. One two. And then now last number, last rule number four. It states that all numbers which are simultaneously to the right of the decimal point and at the end of the number are sig fig. So for example, like uh, 300.3. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 sig figs. Now for addition, um, 2.2 plus 4.6 is 6.8 because it's two sig figs because for addition every number right after the decimal is you just take the least one so it'll be only one place so it's two sig figs. Now I'm going to draw a free body diagram of Alex's car and show you the various types of forces acting upon this car. So first of all there is normal force going up and that is called Fn because Alex he's driving on this road which is considered a stable surface and there's also friction force going that way and that's called FF and there is last but not least gravitational force pulling the car to the ground and that is FG So this is how to find the acceleration of the car in the clip that you just watched. So we have the equation to find the acceleration here, which is e which is velocity final minus velocity initial over the time. So to begin, we have the velocity final, which is 40 miles per hour. So we want to convert that to meters per second. So this is equal to 17.9 meters per second. And then we have the velocity initial, which stays at zero, and the time of eight seconds. So we know that we already know that 17.9 minus zero is 17.9. So we know that 17.9 over eight is equal to is equal to 2.2 meters per second squared. So we know that the acceleration is equal to this, which is 2.2 meters per second 